Kenyans are still reeling in shock after the head of state extended the partial lockdowns in the country. This of course happened yeah, the day after a very shocking incident unfolded in the Rift Valley because in the early hours of Friday 5th June 2020 the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, William Samoy Ruto, went into a very elaborate cleansing ceremony by Talai elders, something that has generated enormous debate amongst Kenyans. And let us start with that on our show today, yeah, before we come down to analyzing yeah, the extension of the lockdowns or rather the extension of the partial lockdown in Kenya. Now, of course, this is not the first time yeah, a leading political figure in the country has gone traditional. Indeed, Kenyan leaders, right down history, have had a fascination yeah, that has gravitated them towards their ancestors and traditional beliefs and ceremonies. The country's founding father, Johnston Kamau, yeah, better known as Mze Jomo Kenyatta, had very firm traditional beliefs. Yeah, this is despite him living for many years abroad, yeah, specifically in the United Kingdom, where it is recorded he even participated yeah, in a vigorous public debate over traditional beliefs, specifically the circumcision of Kikuyu women, which Mze Kenyatta firmly believed in and supported. And this is hardly surprising because the young Jomo, he as an orphan, he without a mother and a father, was brought up by his maternal grandfather, he a very famous traditional seer of the time who is said to have even predicted his ascension to leadership and the presidency of Kenya when young Jomo was only seven years old. I have videos on this channel that cover that topic very extensively. Mzee's vice president, first vice president, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, was yet another traditionalist who firmly believed yeah, in occasionally consulting the ancestors. <laughs> and we know that even today, whenever a general election is called, yeah, those who consult spirits of ancestors and traditionalists, and especially witch doctors, are normally very busy with politicians yeah, being cleansed for political battle, for political office. Bottom line, it is nothing new in Kenya. So, why has it raised so much concern amongst a vast majority of Kenyans? Yeah, the latest incident involving the deputy president. Well, the real reason is that this latest incident comes at a time when Kenyans have woken up dramatically yeah, and have started assessing their leaders and the caliber of their leaders and the performance of their leaders like never before. Yeah, and of course the whole story started with the hotly contested 2017 presidential elections. So many Kenyans, yeah, many of them in the diaspora, who previously ignored Kenyan politics, suddenly developed a very keen interest in following up on what is happening on the Kenyan political scene. I firmly believe historians will refer to it as the great reawakening of the Kenyan voter. But what has to be the main reason yeah, for all this heated debate and interest in what the Deputy President did has to be the image he has portrayed previously yeah, as being a very firm, church-going born-again Christian. 
And this has been further emphasized by his very generous contributions to churches all over the country. Where he has always made the effort to distance himself yeah, from his main political rival, yeah, a traditionalist who doesn't pretend, Raila Amolo Odinga, which effectively means that what the deputy president has been telling us is that you cannot mix church and tradition, and the two are completely separate, yeah, and on opposite sides. You know, there is a very famous photograph taken sometime in 2007 of William Ruto and Raila Odinga when they were in the same political party, ODM, Orange Democratic Movement, kneeling down at a church somewhere. And in that photograph, Raila Odinga looks very much out of place and very uncomfortable in those surroundings. Yeah, while the deputy president looks very much at ease yeah, and at home. Now, let's look at this politically. And the first question has to be, why now? If we were to refer back yeah, to traditional beliefs, cleansing ceremonies were usually done to warriors before they go into battle. It was designed to give the warriors special protection and victory in the upcoming battle. One very good example is the very infamous Maji Maji Rebellion in what is today Tanzania, where the warriors were cleansed with water, Maji, and the idea was that when they faced the colonialists bullets those bullets would not harm them indeed they would turn into water yeah that was the whole idea and that is what the warriors believed as they went into battle well history tells us the side that won yeah it wasn't the maji maji guys yeah so obviously it didn't work all in all this may give us a clue about the timing yeah, the deputy president is preparing himself for serious battle. Political battle. Yeah, and we must assume that it has to do with him remaining on course for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya in 2022. We know that there are very major obstacles that have been placed yeah, on his path. We also know that the previously powerful office of the deputy president has recently been reduced to a mere department within the office of the president. And we have already analyzed this on this channel in a previous video. Yeah, what it means is that the deputy president now has to be firmly behind the agenda of his boss, the president of the Republic of Kenya. And so... There are those who will ask, what battle? Yeah, because there's no battle. What is supposed to happen is that the deputy president is supposed to humble himself, toe the line, and wait until the eve of the next elections to start his battle for the presidency. Theoretically, that is what is supposed to happen. And that would throw cold water <laughs> on our theory that he is preparing for battle. There's no battle. There's supposed to be no battle. However, for those who know the deputy president well, yeah, he is not the type. He is not the character. And indeed, his own Kalenjin community yeah, have no respect yeah, for cowards. You know, people who cow yeah, and accept to abandon their quest, even if it is momentarily. And so it would make perfect sense why in the mind of the deputy president, what is ahead is in fact a furious battle, yeah, irrespective of how he behaves going forward. Indeed, 
it is a battle for political survival. But the question remains, why not go before the Lord, Almighty God, in prayer and fasting if necessary, and pray for God's help and guidance going forward, instead of going before dead ancestors, yeah, where sacrifices were offered, yeah, and where familiar spirits were summoned, why do that yeah, when you've professed and confessed to be a serious Christian? Indeed, such a serious Christian that you have put your money where your mouth is. And indeed, the people who are very disturbed about this latest development are the deputy president's own very firm supporters yeah, who are Christians some of whom have given us prophecies yeah, that indeed the deputy president will rise to the presidency of the country. Those people are very disturbed. They don't know what to tell the deputy president's critics. They have been left with egg on their face yeah, after supporting the deputy president yeah, and telling us that indeed is for God Almighty. Despite his past and despite the image he has yeah, amongst many Kenyans yeah, and indeed all the Kenyans who have followed Kenyan politics for a long time. Now I can see my time is up yeah, because there have been complaints that my videos are too long. But no worries. We're going to cover this thoroughly yeah, in part two of this video. Look out for it. The minute it's ready, you will see a link on the top right hand corner of your screen. And indeed, in the description area here yeah, below this video on YouTube. Until then, this is Chris Kumekucha.